Hi, this is Jose Bhartia, and today we have with us once again Eduardo Silva, founder and CEO of Eleptia and creator of LearnBit. Eduardo, it's great to have you back on the show. Hi, Sunil. Thanks for the invitation to participate. Happy to have a conversation again with you. We have covered Fluent Bit even in early days, but just to refresh memories of our viewers, tell us what is this project all about? Yeah, a bit of background is like a, you have distributed system, right? You know, everybody knows now that Kubernetes is used to coordinate how this distributed system with con based on containers can be scheduled and all of that, right? But that once uh, your applications are working, after that, you, your next journey just starts. It's about how do you monitor these applications? How do you know what's going on, right? And then you have the whole concept of observability that is based on logs, metrics, and traces. Fluentbed initially is a log processor, which is part of the FluentD ecosystem. It's like our new project for the, to solve the same problem at a higher scale. And nowadays, Fluentbed does logs and metrics, and shortly we do trace management. Can you also talk a bit about when we do look at the whole uh, cloud native stack, where does Fluent Bit fit in the picture? We look, look at the whole security landscape, we look at the observability. Where, where does this fit? Yeah. As part of this stack in, in observability in general, uh, one of the main problems is that when you have these up, your user applications running, right? First of all, they are distributed. Second, every application might ship their log information in a different format. And your goal as somebody who's deploying this application, right, or the developer that initially created that application, is to be able to perform some analysis, how my application is doing, what's the load on the application, right? But in order to accomplish that means that you want to do some data analysis. You need to centralize all your information in one place for that. So now how you go from a distributed system where your application is running in multiple nodes in the distributed fashion, and you centralize all this information in one place for analysis. And that's where you need some custom specialized tool like Fluent Dead and, and FluentD. Now, as part of the stack, for example, a Fluent Bed is not the unique solution for this. Also, you wanted to deal with, with metrics, you wanted to deal with traces, it's pretty much common like a Prometheus is used for metrics. Open telemetry nowadays is used for traces. So, and this all come together as one of the solution to the stack of the, of the CNCF in a vendor neutral way. So how have you seen the evolution of observability space and how the scope is also uh, kind of growing because knowing is not enough. Doing something about it is also important at some point. Yeah, I, I, that's a really good question. Actually, it's a very challenging topic, observability in general. One of the biggest problem that we got five, six years ago is like, how do we do an data analysis, as I said, on a distributed environment, right? We saw that problem. And now they said, how do we take this data and add context to the data, right? Because data comes from different sources, like meaning different nodes. Uh, for example, if you're using some, you're, you're using any cloud provider, you might want to add some kind of project ID, sound where this application was added. So you wanted to enrich your information with context, right? And we pretty much we solve all those problems. But now the next problem is like every year, and we have, we're seeing this in the last year, users has more application, bigger clusters. They need to process more data at a higher rate, but at a lower cost of a uh, computing resources, right? It's not that like you can assume that your whole agent that is taking this data will, will use this, you know, very low resources for one, two years ago than now, because two years ago, the amount of data people were generating was quite low. So one of the challenges right now is uh, scalability, right? I'm talking, just talking about how do, when we, we move the data from one place to the other. Now, the evolution for that is like, okay, there are many ways to scale up uh, an agent, but also users, and actually we see that with customers, they say, we have this agent, we have this tool that's from CNCF is collecting data and we choose from embed because it's very low resource profile, right? And why that is important? Because you have many applications running also on the same machine. So your agent cannot consume half of the resources to process all that information. And that with Fluent Bed, we have been able to solve that problem. And now how this, uh, how this has been evolving for us from a Fluent Bed perspective, 
is like the last year, the last 12 months, we just focus on performance, performance, performance. Improvement, be able to process more uh, records per second, transfer the data file in a faster way, scale up with threads internally in the agent. But also there's other challenges that or how things are switching in observability. When I say at the beginning, it's like people care about data analysis, right? Take my data from the left, from many services, and put it on the right in one database so I can do analytics and get my insights or run machine learning, whatever you want. But now there's a trend where this a concept of moving the data from left to right, sometimes it has it all, a, its pros and cons. And one of the cons is like it takes time because you have to index the data, you have to make sure that if you get any error or something's going to be retrieved from the agent side, you're not going to get the data uh, right on time because as bigger your cluster is, more time you need to process this data or this data gets available to be in a queryable state. So the trend we see in observability is like users are asking to split this processing of data or this kind of analytics and instead of doing everything on the right, on the central database, just perform some analytics on the edge where the data is being generated. For example, in Fluentbit, we implemented some time ago, like years ago, a, a string processing support with SQL. So you can say, take this information, query for this pattern, and if it matches, you know, create a new stream of data that goes to X place. And that happens in real time. If you want to do the same thing with a more traditional database after indexing, yeah, it might take you a couple of minutes or more. And I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but it's like, if you have a big problem, you have to, you need to split the problem in parts and attack every component separately, right? And moving analytics to the left is something that has been working out really well. Now, for example, that is about loss. If we talk about metrics, we're seeing this explosion of metrics, right? And one of the biggest, another problem in metrics in observability that is changing now, is like now, oy, the same thing that happened with logs and you might recall uh, some of the people, you know, talking about Splunk, that the bills are so high, you were, were ingesting so much data. The same thing is happening now with metrics because there's more implementation for metrics, but also we are sending more metrics. That means your bills are going up. So it's like, oh, what are the solutions to take my metrics, get control over my metrics, and make sure that I can reduce those metrics and just get whatever I need and not extra information. So things are switching from more to the left. In analytics, they are also going into more pre-processing on the left. In, and also, well, traces is a, is a different world. I would say a, a, an interesting monster where now open telemetry is taking over that uh, those challenges, right, with tracing. And, and we as, as a fluent project, uh, our vision is like, we see also another problem with observability, talking about open telemetry, talking about Prometheus because we're doing metrics too. It's like most of applications in production are um, you know, instrumented with Prometheus. That's the standard now. Now open telemetry, which originated for traces, is jumping into metrics space now. Now we see the user that question their themselves saying, how do I take my metrics in Prometheus and then get into an OTLP open telemetry backend? There's no easy translation layer, layer. and that's what we're doing in Fluentbit. Be able to connect not just a, with cloud providers, with vendors um, solutions, but also interoperate between the stack that we have in CNCF. How we take Prometheus compo metrics components payloads and we transfer that to open telemetry. And, and that's one another of the current challenges that we're facing at observability. Now, if I may also ask, first of all, thanks for explaining that. I also want to understand, uh, can you talk about the adoption of this project, how it's being embraced, and what role is it playing in the larger CNCF landscape? Yeah, the, the, the adoption is, has been quite interesting. You know, originally Fluentbit was created for embedded Linux, right? We're talking about six years ago. And switch it, it quickly switch it to Cloud as a cloud native solution, right? So it was at the same time that Kubernetes was running FluentD, Fluent was not fast enough, and Fluentbit was uh, the answer from our same community to that specific uh, use case. Now, uh, the adoption has been quite great. Despite we don't have all the numbers 
that, for example, cloud providers to use Fluent Bet, for example, AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, all of them use Fluent Bet in their Kubernetes cluster and their own services. We don't have those numbers. But at least from a community perspective, we saw that our container registry on Docker Hub starting getting more and more uh, deployments per day. So we have just a general metric of how many times this image has been downloaded, right? And assuming being deployed. And now we just cross uh, the limit of 1 billion times. So this 1 billion took like, I think that four to five years in general. But today we see a, a number of, I don't know, 2 million deployments per day. So that means there is a trend where this is going up, right? So we have more Kubernetes clusters. That means that all these uh, nodes on those clusters need to have an agent to process logs, to process metrics, and that one is flowing bed. Yeah, you folks also released, if I'm not wrong, version 1.9 uh, this month. If you can tell me, you know, what are some of the new features and functionalities of this release? Yeah, so we hit this biggest milestone for us. We call 1.9 uh, a major version that we have been closing really close well with the, with the cloud providers and our community. And one of the biggest things is around 1.9, I would say, is performance, right? Performance, you know, we work it a lot in order to tweak and make sure that the engine can scale even to a higher number of uh, messages per second. And also the throw, in general throughput be, be higher. We, we got um, new connectors, you know, since we connect to different backends. Now, one of the biggest ones is OpenSearch, right? So we are working closely with the OpenSearch community. And now we used to support just Elasticsearch, but now we support Elastic plus uh, OpenSearch. We just landed a new Kafka input plugin, right? We didn't that, have that at the moment uh, before, but we allowed the, the agent to subscribe to a Kafka topic, get the messages in and process that through the Fluent Bed pipeline. And also we got the, these new Prometheus connectors. So Prometheus Exporter, Prometheus Remote Write. We got a new Prometheus Scraper. So you can use Fluent Bit also to scrape metrics from a remote application instrumented by Prometheus. And in an experimental way, we are launching new open telemetry collect, uh, sorry, open telemetry plugins for metric sources and for destination uh, around metrics. Uh, in the next few following weeks, we are going to launch the Trace support. Can you also share what kind of roadmap you have for the project? Or let's say, what are the things you'll be focusing on in this year? Yeah, we just had a, a, a product call the, the, this morning, right, with, with, with maintainers. And I would say that uh, we are in Q1. For Q2 and the remaining part of the year, we we'll keep working on in performance, right? And one of the biggest challenges that we are, we are working in technical terms right now is support threading for the input plugins, but as well support Golang input plugins. That is something that has been in the to-do list for a while, but now we are just putting all the pieces in place so also more people can contribute back to the project. Your Fluent Bit is written in C, so sometimes that adds a, a barrier to, to contributors, right? But now we are extending to that to support Golang, so we are, our expectations that more people will be able to to create their own connectors, their own uh, implementation, or enrich their the data in uh, for their own specific use case. So one of them is perform. So if you would take the category, it will be like a performance and, and give more power to developers through the, the pipelines. Excellent, Edward. Thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the project. And as usual, I'd love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Zunim. Thanks for the invitation.